Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm doing a book review for you guys. This is the book that um, you guys voted for at, uh, in my 100 subscribers video. Um, I gave you a list of five books, and this was the one that got the most votes. I finished reading it, so now I'm going to tell you my thoughts. The book is The Orpheus Process by Daniel H. Gower. This book was published in 1992 um, under the Dell Abyss line. So this is one of those books that I got in that big book haul that I um, I found at Goodwill. All those all those old vintage um, paperbacks, and it was pretty good. It uh, it was definitely um, a wild ride to say the least. Um, this book is about a guy. Um, his name is Dr. Helmond. And he is a scientist. He's doing research at a university in, I think it's in Ohio or Indiana or somewhere. Um, and <clears throat> basically what he's doing is he's, um, he's discovered a way to reanimate dead bodies. And so, you know, he's doing his experiments. He's doing, he's doing experiments on, like, smaller animals, rats and cats and dogs and stuff like that. Um... And so what he does is he kills the animal, then he reanimates them, and then he just, like, observes them and studies them and makes sure that they're, like, okay and all of that. And so his research is going pretty well. He's able to bring back rats and things like that. So he's, he's, he's kind of moving up to higher, higher animals. In the beginning of the book, he, um, they resurrect a rhesus monkey. And the, the experiment goes well. He brings the monkey back, and, and everything seems to be fine with the monkey and he decides oh you know the monkey's been through a lot so let's bring him home and he can be like a pet he's got one teenage kid from a previous marriage and then two little kids his daughter Eunice is um like seven and his son Andy is like three or four and, and his wife Janice um is also there so they, they have this monkey and um he his name's lazarus they it becomes like a pet everyone in the family likes lazarus a lot the kids don't know that it's a reanimated um, corpse uh, but the wife does and she at first is kind of kind of concerned about that but then you know after a while she starts to really like the monkey and he's really like a nice very very nice pet so anyway he continues his experiments uh they do a few more rhesus monkeys and then eventually they decide to him and his assistant decide to uh go one step further and they try to reanimate a chimpanzee it does not go well um the chimpanzee some crazy, some crazy stuff happens, and the chimpanzee ends up dying from, as a result of the experiment. Um, and so they're trying to figure out what went wrong and why, um, like higher animals have a harder time reanimating and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not. This isn't really a spoiler because it hasn't happens pretty early on. But I will say this is going to get a little spoilery, and I do intend to probably I, I'm going to spoil some stuff. So if you if you don't want to hear anything else then you should probably just click off the video and go read the book and come back but anyway so it's halloween him and his daughter are out trick-or-treating and stuff um and after after they're done trick-or-treating or whatever they go to this like drive-in like like a sonic kind of is kind of what i'm imagining um type of a fast food place and they get ice cream while they're there, and uh, a Vietnam vet with PTSD um, goes with a gun and starts and goes and just shoots a bunch of people, um, and kills a bunch of people, and one of the people that gets shot and killed is Eunice, his daughter. Now, obviously, uh, this is very traumatic, and in the moment he decides um, he's going to quick rush her to the lab and reanimate her. He doesn't really think much about it. He just does it. As a parent, it'd be really hard, like, not to do that. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some pretty uh, there's some pretty big ramifications later on in the story, obviously, around around that decision. Things start to go bad um, when some of the reanimation, like, they learn more stuff about the reanimation and like the long term effects of it and how the animals like 
over time start to break down and stuff. So now the story becomes like he's trying to figure out a way to stop this process from happening to his daughter. He's also, he didn't tell his wife or anyone else that he reanimated his daughter. It's also like he's trying to, um, to, I guess, cover up the fact. He doesn't want anyone to find out what happened. But he's also trying to save his daughter. It all, it all escalates to a point where he can't hide it anymore. It's cr and the last third of this book just gets insane. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I don't want to go too much into it because it is it is it is wild. It is very very gory. It turns into this like sort of zombie novel where there's all these corpses walking around trying to kill people in this town. What did I like about the book? I thought the um the writing was pretty good uh, overall. There wasn't. It, it was very just. Um, it wasn't very flowery prose. It just told the story sort of very effectively, and that was fine. You know, I I liked the main character. I thought he was like a like a pretty good character. He was very. He was full of hubris. He thought he was you know a great scientist and all of this stuff. But he really, he really didn't think about the long term like ramifications of his of his research, and he didn't. Um, do his due diligence uh, when when uh, deciding how to go about um, doing the science that he's doing and it really does it bites him in the ass hard um, and you know people die people yeah lots lots of bad stuff happens he makes a lot of bad decisions um, namely bringing the monkey home not a very good decision um, reanimating his daughter not a very good decision now granted like I said, it would be, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if he had known the outcome, he maybe would have made a different decision, but it would have been hard. Like it's, it kind of reminds me of, um, Pet Cemetery, sort of in the setup, you know, you got like a father who's, 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 um, grieving his dead child and there's an opportunity to bring them back and he takes it despite the potential consequences. Um, and it, and it isn't good. The outcome is not good. Um, and it would have been better to just leave the, the, the kid dead. The ending was was crazy. I, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was uh, it was sufficiently gory and fun. Um, it wasn't. It didn't take itself, itself too seriously. The science wasn't like super well researched. You know, like especially towards the end, it got to be the to where things were just happening and he was like i don't know why this is happening it just is and um it got a little bit to be like oh things were just happening for the sake of like the story um without really any explanation which is fine it's not a science fiction story although it does um maybe at the beginning especially kind of kind of seem like it is it it, it becomes much more like, the science is not the the main focus of the story. The main focus of the story is um, what's happening to his daughter and how he's trying to prevent her from turning into this monster, um, which he fails miserably at. <laughs> um, he thought he was doing something great, and he thought, like, a lot of his motivation was he wanted to be famous, he wanted to be rich, he wanted to... He thought he 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 talks a lot about like or thinks a lot about um, playing God and he compares himself to God and how he is kind of like overcoming this um, like the idea of death and and discovering immortality and he uh, it it really goes to his head he's got a really big ego um, around all of that and you know he he is doing some pretty groundbreaking research he's just not. He's just not being careful. He's doing, he's just doing it without, without, uh, without really concern. He's without really any concern um, to the consequences of his actions. So uh, that's really where his downfall is. Um, I think I gave it a three on Goodreads, which is pretty good for me. Three is usually solid, solid book. This author, Daniel H. Gower, he wrote one other book, and it's in this Del Abyss line. It's called Harrowgate, I think. Um, so I'm interested in reading that. I'm definitely interested in reading more of these, um, these Abyss books. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, but yeah, this is a good little, a nice little foray into this, uh, 
line of, of vintage horror books that I that I got. So uh, that's all I got for you today. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content. I've got another review here pretty soon. Then I got a couple more videos planned for the channel here in the next couple weeks. That's all I got. See you guys next time. Peace.